Okay. So, as we were talking, you guys are in the Hall of Fires right now. That's where you left off. Percy is laying unconscious. And the rest of you are deciding what you are going to do. You were talking about a... Uh, Investigating the um, different portals. Yes, all the different and circles or portals. They have the five rings, interlocked ring symbol that the fire burns out of the center of. Okay. And they've got a bunch of runes around, and every portal has a different set of runes, so you know they're different words. And we just came through one, and we're going to turn around and try to... to take out the magnifying glass. Yes. Now, the last time Percy tried to take out his magic magnifying glass and translate, uh, you were on top of the uh, pinnacle in the swamp, mm -hmm. and it did not work, mm -hmm. if you remember. I remember that very clearly. It did not work. Um, right. You do not know why. Um, you want to take it out and have a look and try here again? Absolutely. You take it out, and it does not work here either. Could I ask that one of you take a look into our journal and take a look at the names of the gods and figure out, I'm assuming that each of these portals is going to relate to a location where the, um, I don't know, what do you call it? The, the talisman we have to find for each god. Yeah, exactly. That is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. I love it when you can translate. Right. So you were, you were, you found that uh, temple that you escaped, that underground temple of the nine gods. And so you're assuming that uh, these portals relate to that. I am. There's way more than nine, though. In fact, uh, in the room you're in, you discovered, yes, that there are not the same number of portals in this room. There are, in fact, more than that. Okay, so that um, through that theory. Yeah. So how many of these portals are there? Six, seven, eight. eight. You only find that many on this particular map. However, what doesn't show here is there's an archway that goes to another room with another set, and beyond that, an archway to another room with another set. And you see a whole series of five or six halls. Which one has bear behind it? <laughs> I, would, I knew you'd be thinking about that. <laughs> he is bear. He is a good dog. So, okay, Percy, so. do a uh, perception here. Not Percy, I'm sorry. Raven, Raven. do a, Raven, Raven, do a perception. <coughs> Raven does a perception check. Raven does a perception check. Um, nine plus eight is seventeen. Okay, the only thing that you can sense in this room when you try and do a sense for magic in the room is just an overwhelming flood of raw natural magic energy. So you cannot sense any particular thing in any particular spot. It appears to be flowing to and fro through all of the different portals into this room. So there's etheric energy flowing into the portals and flowing back out of them from this room into wherever all of those portals go. Okay, so I'm going to take out um, my ink and I'm going to write to the portal that we just came out of, uh, Fire Finger. And that way we can find it twice because these will all look the same real fast yes one of the okay. things that just happened is i pulled one of my new cards and it talks about charity generosity and gratitude which is guiding us to make sure that any of the portals that we go to that is related to our god or anything else that we give gratitude to them and that we honor them and that it will give us greater degrees of success of being able to make transitions rather than just shoot them exactly <laughs> so uh we'll go around the table and see what's going on with everybody right now josephine what's going on with you i don't see anything to shoot so 
I'm just standing here. You're just standing there? Honest. All yes. right. Where are you standing? Put your little I'm mini where you're right at. There. Okay. That's where you want to be. Good. I just want everybody to make sure they update their minis on the table. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm um, I'm watching for any activity. Like, because this is really weird. So I'm just sitting here and looking for something to pop out at me so I can shoot it. Okay. Uh, Lavinia, what about you? What is, um, is your mini in the right place? I can't really see my ears. Okay, I think I'd like my mini to be just a little bit closer to those guys. Not very much, but just enough so that I can turn around, touch my shoulder, and put my hand out and do a group heel. So anybody who wants to be in my group heel, get close. And, who's in need of being healed? I'm down... Eight points. I'm in you. I'm all right. You all right? I am down. Ten points. Fifteen points. And I'm forty-four minus twenty-seven. Whatever that happens to work out to. Forty-four minus twenty-seven. Yeah, I'm. I'm down to twenty-seven points. No, you're down to twenty-seven. So that's. You're not down twenty-seven. Yes. No. Yeah. I'm saying, what is forty-four minus twenty-seven? Okay, math whizzes around here. Twelve, thirteen. Okay, so I, eighteen maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm casting heel towards Rod and anybody. Wait, else. seventeen. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like it took a while. Well, it's it did long take the magical electronic box. Thing. I didn't duck there. <laughs> Okay. Fair enough. So please consider the then casting. Now, does that heal work on you as well? Yes, it does. Okay. So while she's doing that, what are you doing, Sadius? We get it. I'm attempting to make sure to um, make sure that he's stable at least and not in any great Does distress. everyone get it too? Like, do I even you find that he know. is groaning and he is he is kind of thrashing slowly back and forth. As though he's got some kind of struggle going on. He's unconscious completely. Anybody who needs it gets two. Um, a whole two. <laughs> that was a whole two lot points. Of, two. Whole lot of work Everybody can points. update their, their health points by two. Two points. I'm a squishy visitor. I have Oh, look, something scary. Yeah, that's right. Run away, run away, run away. So, Raven, you have any other ideas? I would like to ask if I can take 100 um, chips from or uh, gems from the bag of holding because I'm about to buy or make some scrolls and I need to buy them. Okay. Uh, you're going to have to get the bag of holding off of Percy, who's carrying it. But he's unconscious. And he's laying there. Okay. So, is everybody okay if I do that? Yes. I have no yeah. objection. I think we want this. There's, there's a key. They're, they're in the bag of holding for okay. everyone's use. That's what I did. And I'm just going to hang out with these guys and help um, aid um, Thaddeus so with we're Percy's taking up gem. Yeah. Yes. And I'm going to take them to my, He's over there. my uh, little bag. Okay, so as... Percy, I mean, as Raven is busy working on getting his arrow-like gems out of the bag of holding and doing that, uh, Thaddeus notices that Percy is beginning to all of a sudden thrash more and more and more. <laughs> Pretty soon, he's starting to actually scream as he thrashes. And black mist start to appear across the floor and travel towards his body. So, uh, as he begins to thrash, black mists start to uh, suddenly appear out of nowhere on the floor and trace themselves towards him. Um, Where's the black mist coming from? Out of nowhere on the floor and tracing itself towards him. 
and uh, he begins to thrash very violently as these mists begin to envelop his body. Thrash and violently. He is <laughs> violently thrash. No, no, that's not that's not a violent thrash. <laughs> that, Thaddeus, what are you going to do? Um, I'm giving another try to try and take the uh, mask off. Okay, so Thaddeus tries to reach to get the mask off. And uh, Thaddeus, you are going to have to roll a fortitude state. 17. 17. Okay, uh, so as these mists ar- uh, surround him, he thrashes so violently that he knocks you backwards. You fly five feet backwards and you land prone on the ground, but you do not take any damage. Suddenly things get very quiet, and then rising up out of the mists, rising up out of those mists where Percy used to be, this is what you see. Roll for initiative. <laughs> so Percy is no longer there. There's this other creature in this place. Is that correct? That is correct. Well, Percy's not still there. There is no oh, Percy to be found. found. All you see is a massive, giant, humanoid, furred being with massive long black claws wearing the same wooden mask that Percy had been wearing just a little while before. So zoom in on, on uh, Josephine and this person. <laughs> <laughs> Percy, you're in a unique situation. You find yourself now returning to consciousness and you're able to see out of the eyes of the mask. Why does he always get possessed? And <laughs> First it was a bunny. Now it's a cat. <laughs> you find yourself in a very strange place. It just seems to be uh, as though you are inhabiting the mask and you're looking out through the eyes of the mask. But... Uh, you can't speak. There's no sound. Uh, you have no nothing else that you can do other than simply watch what happens. Um, and you find that uh, your mind is connected to the mind of another being now. So that's what you know just for this moment. So, Raven, what was your uh, total initiative? I rolled a 12. Rolled a 12. Uh, Josephine, total initiative? 24. 24? See, that's not too bad. Yeah, you will go first. <laughs> Thaddeus? Oh, no. Ooh, Thaddeus. He gets starts. a big bonus. You know? He gets a big bonus. And Lavinia? 23. 23. All right. So this being suddenly getting its bearings spins around, sees all of you across the hall, and uh, uh, all of a sudden you hear this low guttural growl, this low guttural tiger growl as it suddenly says, (laughs) Wilders, fresh meat! And then it leaps at one. And the rear tiger leaps across, across the room. Across the room. And Norn and the people who are very close to him. One of them directly at Josephine. Mmm, tasty. I'm prone. Oh. Yes, Thaddeus is prone. I'm Percy right is <laughs> Percy is now a passenger watching through the mask. And Josephine, who is halfway across the fire. Finds that the tiger leaps right at her. He has good taste. Yes. And uh, he attacks her with his claws. He takes a swipe and hits her and does 11 points of damage. 
welcome to the game. Eleven points. What the heck? Okay, thirty-seven minus thirty-eight minus thirty is twenty-eight. So. As he does this, Percy, for the first time, hears, as though it's in his very own mind, a voice, the same uh, similar voice coming to him. And it says, first, I will feast upon the body of your companions, and then I will feast upon your very soul. <laughs> All of a sudden, the same being who is now seems to be occupying exactly the same space that you, that in your mind that you do, Percy. Uh, all of a sudden, you hear him tentatively pause, and uh, this being is looking through your memories, and suddenly he becomes very intent and very interested in one of your memories and it's as though you're watching a screen of your memories play by as they're being examined by this being and the memory is the entire group of you being trapped in the crystal load mine and coming through it out into the portal into this world you realize you can hear this being's thoughts just the way it can hear your thoughts. Uh, you hear it thinking to itself that this might be an opportunity for it to find this portal and go through this portal into your own world. You sense a, an emotional sense of desperation where the being is trying to escape something. Hmm. Can I ascertain uh, tonight? Yeah, am I in a state where I can inquire of it? Yes, you can speak to it. It can speak to you in thought, various ways. The other thing that's interesting is that uh, this memory thing works both ways. And you can look through its memories as well. One of the things that you notice as you look around the room, uh, having this mask on, you realize that... Uh, all of the runes, you can read them. They're very clear to you. Hmm. And you can see what they say. For example, uh, the runes that are around the center fire that all of you came through, the runes say a name. The name is Mistvale Marsh. And there are a number of other different um, names on a lot of the other portals. As well, well. Well, I want to inquire of him. What do you fear? What do you seek? He isn't listening to anything you say. But if you look through his memories, one of the things that you begin to see is that he is a very, very old being. That uh, he has been running from something, but he has got it locked away, whatever it is he is running from. And you see countless, countless, countless memories of this being catching people, trapping them, and consuming them as a predator. Moving across many, many, many places in the world. My companions are powerful, but they could be better helpers than foes. He still is ignoring whatever it is that you have to say. You can see that a plan is formed in his mind that he has decided that instead of consuming your soul, he is going to keep you intact. And uh, that is only until he gets to the uh, portal using your memories to find the Crystal Ode Springs portal so that he can uh, uh, try and go through it back to our, your home world of terror. He finally does reply to you and he says one small sentence to you. And it basically is enjoy your small reprieve. The power from your soul will be perfect for the transition to your other world. Uh, and then he turns his attention back to the fight. Okay, okay. so Thaddeus. Um, I thought my dad was going to turn on the pterodactyls. Yes, okay. Um, I'm good with that. So I, I get up and uh, 
stilettos. So Thaddeus, you're going to throw at the tiger again. And I'll get a plus six on the stilettos. Eighteen plus six. Okay. Hits. Because you get fire damage as well as uh, the dagger damage. Two and four. Two and four? Total points of six. All right, so as you do that, two, two, two daggers. Is that just one, one dagger? That's, are you throwing a second dagger? No, I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> And it's not plus six this time. Uh, I think for your second dagger, uh, I'm going to rule that your first two daggers are both equal in uh, in attack power, and then after that, you start to have diminishing returns. Can I ask you a question? If we hurt this being, is a complete impulsion. That's my concern. <laughs> this is something you don't know. We don't know that yet. Okay. Uh, all we know is that it's trying to eat us. 15 plus 6. So better it's... him than us. In my opinion. Sorry. Sorry for saying that. That's right. If Percy has to you know, die for the green ball, oh, well, that's the green ball. Just say. <laughs> At least it would be good. Three. Did somebody get a camera shot of that? Three, 3 plus 6? For damage? No, three and three. Equal three six. and three equals six. Takes another six points of damage. One way. Keep crossing your eyes. Continuously. Okay, so <laughs> Tha- Thaddeus has thrown his stilettos and they have hit their mark and they are now sticking out of uh, the uh, weird creature's back. And you hear it growl and react just a little bit, but yeah, but it doesn't seem to change or phase the tiger back. at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give it a turn. Okay. <laughs> Takes a turn and then let go. Oh. And then you can use the, the turn after that. Okay. So not every single turn, right? Mm-hmm. So they go out. He's got a six-second turn. Really? Over the oh, next right. six and seconds, they do come back. And so he can use them every other turn. He's so got to do something else in that second turn. Yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, Thaddeus has done his job. Lavinia, you are next, and Josephine, you're after Lavinia. I'm casting message. You're casting what? Message. Message. Okay. What is message? And I'm asking him, what do you need? You do not need to be fighting with us. Tell us what you need. So, message is you mouth words quietly, but instead of coming out of your mouth, they're transferred directly to the ears of the target. While those can't hear your words any better than you, you normally mouth them. The target will hear your words as they are standing next to you. The target can give a brief response as a reaction or as a free action on their next turn if they wish, but they must be able to see you and within range to do so. If they respond, their response is delivered directly to your ear. Okay. Cantrip. Cool. Fine. All right. What message is it that you whisper into the weird tiger's ear? We come in peace. What do you need from us? Uh, All you get back in response is a grim chuckle and the words, I simply need uh, to consume you, both your body and your soul. Don't worry, it won't be long now. Do I get to say anything back? Or? That is uh, one action. So you have two more actions that you can do. You could use those actions to do more messages if you wish, or to do something else. Like, like can I cast it with a spell on him? Or? You have two actions. Most spells take two actions. Well, if that's the case, then um, does Magic Missile take two? You can shoot one. It's Magic Missile is a missile per action. So one, two, or three. You've got two actions. You can shoot two Magic Missiles. I'm shooting two Magic Missiles. Then. All right. Uh, if you shoot two Magic Missiles, there's no way you can miss them. They're going to hit no matter what. So that's a D4. Roll two D4. 
and we'll add one extra point of force damage. Two. A two and a... Four. A two and a four. All right. So that's six points of damage plus one. Yeah. Total of seven points of damage. Just as those missiles hit him, you can see Thaddeus's daggers fading from where they are as they're preparing to magically transport back to his gloves. And that is the end of your turn. It becomes Josephine's turn. Raven, Raven you're next. So, roll to hit. Yeah, I'm just, um, I'm sorry. Okay, action is going to spring up. Peacemakers, Peacemakers are a plus ten. Roll to hit. With the left, I rolled a 20. It's critical Three. damage. Yeah. Cool. So, so you get to double 2d6 and 1d4. Nine. Nine points of damage. So let's see your pew pew action with your gun again. Where was that? Where is it here? What? So you pull out the first gun and. That was a lot. Nine points of damage. Leg, hit and him then, right in the chest. And then, with the right. Roll the hit. Okay. So. so roll the 15 on my right. Hits. 15 hits. You rolled a 15, and then your your bonus on top of that. Is that correct? No, 15, 15 is what I rolled, and what was yeah. my bonus? Like well, your gunslinger, pew pew, both first two shots, same amount of damage, or same amount of strength. Six. Awesome. And one, seven. Seven points of damage. All right, this time uh, the tiger growls. Very loudly, being quite angry about what has just happened uh, and the damage that he's taken. Can I run away? You can step. A step is an action. You go five feet. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he doesn't have an opportunity to attack. That's, yeah. a, that's a disengage. That's yeah, a disengage. step is basically a disengage. It takes one action. Which means that if you had only pulled one gun, shot him in the face, Used your section action to step, disengage, and then used your third action to run. You could have made twenty-five feet of distance instead of just five. Yeah, but I wouldn't have done the extra damage. Fifteen points of damage. That's right. So it's a trade-off. However, you're dealing with a weir tiger that can clear thirty feet in a leap, no problem. Obviously, right. Really? So trying to get away from him is going to be physically Im impossible to do because he can move much further and much faster than any of you ever can. I just didn't want to be like face to face with him anymore because his breath is really stinky. <laughs> Fish breath. Fish breath? He just <laughs> I think he's going to have a little bit of gunslinger breath if he keeps on pursuing his uh, his current prey. We'll see what happens with that. That brings it to Raven. It's Raven's turn, and then it is the Weird Tiger's turn again. I will cast Summon Animal. All right. So. And I'm going to summon a, a, um, a Velociraptor. A Velociraptor. A Velociraptor. Yay. Here we go. We have our little dinosaur Velociraptor out of our dinosaur egg tube that Rob bought for us. <laughs> Perfect. So here he is. You can put him on the game table where you want him to be. He is going to go on like the tiger on a tiger's table. butt. Flank him. He will attack. He attacks, and uh, what kind of hit points? Is, what kind of hit has he got? I'm just uh, trying to decipher that. So Strike plus eight. Plus eight. So he's going to roll to hit. He rolls a fifteen plus eight. That hits. One d six plus three piercing. So twenty three. One d six plus three. Uh, 
two plus um, whatever the other was. He, he's using a jaw, actually. So it's 1d6 plus 3 piercing. 2 plus 3. Or 5. He will bite his shoulder. He will and, leap up and try and bite his shoulder? That's right. To help, um, try and pull him off of uh, Josephine. Yeah, well, you step to away. reduce his ability to attack. All right. He's a total free for me. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, it, that's awesome. It's going to work great. So as the Velociraptor raptor bites uh, the Weirtagger, Raven, from your point of view, you notice, strangely, that there's some black smoke curling up from the Weirtagger's back. And uh, there is the smell of burnt fur in the air. And it's not, well, maybe it's from the magic missiles. Wouldn't be from the stilettos. Mm. Maybe it's from the shot that the two shots that the weird tiger took to the face and chest. But there's, but the smoke is definitely curling up from the weird tiger's back. All right. Vel Velociraptor has made his attack and it becomes weird tiger's turn. Uh oh, weird tiger goes to make another attack but is distracted because something's wrong and as he looks down there's a black string that's been very tight black string that has been cutting into his chest and beginning, beginning to burn him like a branding iron He reaches behind and realizes that he has a black smoking bow on Aha. his back. Do you notice there were some arrows in the picture? Of the yeah. Tiger? yeah. And, and this string is enchanted with the, with the uh, wild hunt. And the, the god of the undead essentially showed up. So the tiger... Reaches back, takes hold of the bow. As the tiger brings the bow around, you hear it growl. What is this? What is burning? It pulls the bow out, holds it at arm's length, looks at it, and you hear it howl. No! And he tries to throw the bow away. But black tendrils have begun to snake out of the bow and wrap them around the tiger's arm and hand. And the tiger the cannot throw the bow away. He is unable to release it. It will continue to burn you unless you release me. <laughs> That's what Percy says, seeing this through the mask's eyes. Okay. Um... Now, here's an interesting thing. The rest of Percy's attire, his belongings, everything else seem to have morphed away as part of the tiger's morph magic. But the tiger's morph magic obviously has no power over the shadow world because it comes from the shadow world. And the bow now has trapped his arm. So the weir tagger wheels, forgets its prey, and chasing Josephine. Whew. And as it starts to leap across the hall, still holding onto the bow in its hand, you hear it say, No, Arwan, you bastard! <laughs> and it leaps into one of the portals. Foop and disappears. And with that thing, we're going to take a break. Okay, we're going to take a 10 minute break.